the floor with Ultra Prime in game number one. We'll see if Ultra Prime can bounce back as we have a smolder yet again for another side this time <laughs> around. We'll have the ruler locked in into the Draven. And that is a good pick into it, I feel like, with that aggression in bot lane we saw work out for JDG already. The Darius locked in Bro, for decade. We got the Noxus duo on Ultra Prime. I don't know if that has any significance the to the game. But yeah, exactly. They're brought in. They're looking for the aggression. They're looking to stop that smolder into the ground. And ooh, also an interesting last pick, right? Because we've seen glimpses, bits of the Ari coming in after the buffs that it received. And now Yagao going back to the pick. In my mind, this was one of the metas where Yagao looks most comfortable, right? Playing, enabling your jungle with the charm, always being able to follow up with that ulti. And now gonna be positioned to do a similar thing once again. It's an interesting position to be in for Ultra Prime. It was definitely an underdog story, it felt like, uh, as a whole in this one, because obviously Ultra Prime sitting at uh, two and eight. They've already gone into the nightmare that is an eight loss season, but they are trying to find some light in that. And I think finding that consistency that we brought up at the beginning of the day and at the beginning of these series is key for them. But that consistency has to come from somewhere, and I just don't know where. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they, they got to find it, right? And I, I feel like, especially right now, in this game, you're looking at the Darius, seeing how he can fare up in that top side, if he can find his own advantage. Darius has have been menaces in the early laning phases for some summoners, and then the Draven. How do they play around that lane? Can they get past the unstoppable defenses that Abram brings? I'm not sure. It's all going to be up to missing. It's all going to be up to Ultra Prime and how they play around that Draven. I love it because uh, we came into this one wanting to put a bit of a focus on Jue and missing two core components of their teams. Missing definitely flies under the radar on a team that's full of stars, but a crucial component in nonetheless. We saw in that last game that Rakan was looking real good, but Jue has been one of the best performing members on Ultra Prime. So as we get into game number two, let's see if Ultra Prime can stand up to snuff and give a fight back to JDG. Yeah, it does seem like I'm going to be having the Jios with this one. Like you said, going to be looking at that ball lane, how the supports do. Not the most fun or interactive support matchup, right? Jue hooks. We see him missing, can block it himself. He's going to be happy to get hooked and just start applying all the passive stacks. Oh, yeah. Onto anyone is... I feel like Braum fun. wins that matchup, right? Like, oh, In of terms of like the combination. Yeah. So uh, having that into the Draven is huge. <laughs> it has always been interesting that with how often the meta in LPL has been, like engaged tanks... It felt like there were previous splits where it entailed a lot more Braum in the LPL, but never yeah. been a big pick here in this region. Uh, we'll bring it out in this game. Again, can make sense. Going to do great at like kind of fading away from those trades and setting up for a ruler to get some good return damage and some, a good amount of stacks. JDG out in force to protect against any level ones that could be there. I think if you walked into a Braum level one, you'd be asking for some hurt. So I'm glad Ultra Prime didn't do that. Uh, but I think that does bring a lot more focus to this jungle matchup. And if Hacker can find those early advantages followed up with Yuakai, this combo, the Karma with the Lee Sin, it is a great one. But those combinations have to be together and often. Yeah, and also I, I'd say it should be on the losing end once we hit level 6 and you have uh, the Crescent 2 player on with Kanavi. So we'll see if they can maintain that one. But for now, eyes are back on the bot lane. Hacker is pathing down here. Kanavi, though, is starting on the bot side himself. Love the positioning of Doggo and Jue. They'll just take the forward front because they realize they've picked a champion that loves level one trades against a champion that absolutely despises them. And Doggo takes the advantage, almost kills missing outright, burns the heal there too, and they'll just have full advantage down there. Exactly. You're definitely going to need a few more abilities on Braum and Smolder before you can uh, continuously survive just those hooks being thrown out before Braum will feel fine putting up that Unbreakable and just being able to walk away just fine. But it's been nice that Ultra Prime have found a window to get a bit of a small advantage in that bot lane. So countering the combo of Hacker and Yukai seems to be the plan for Kanavi and Yagao as they will find the angle on the Yukai. He's going to burn the flash, but it doesn't matter. Pulled back in by the charm and killed by Kanavi. Well, like I said, I, I like this combo a lot more in my mind than what Ultra Prime have in terms of the 2v2. Eve, mm. like having the charm to set up, you have CC on Xin Zhao as well to be able to enable that, uh, elongate the fight, more damage. 
that he's bringing to the table. Punish Yuakai now won't have the flash. So potentials for return ganks are always there. But with the speed up from the E, still can be a little bit of a nuisance to find that return kill if they want to look for it. Yeah, I, I wonder now how... Fa okay, so I am actually looking now. Decade's going for a bit of aggressive ward. On to uh, Kanavi. We'll spot him out. We're getting a nice little 2v2 trade back in the favor of JDG here. Hacker is floating down here. And Dway's going to pull the trigger now. Doggo getting hit. Those concussion blows starting to stack up. They're going to get it here. Ruler going for the kill. And he's going to get it. No, he flashes. He can't get the vision. He gets one more auto. And there it is. Doggo goes down. First blood for JDG. They might be able to punish Ruler now. And they do. That dragon is dead. I am a bit surprised. That we just saw a flash come out from Zway for that ruler having to blow his flash too though. Let's go down in the end. But still really one willing to just Deku. fight Doggo. <laughs> He's like somebody Doggo said something to him, I feel like. Wit becomes lightning and decade flashes. Really nice uh there by Kanavi to make sure you get some summoners out of him. Now it's gonna be a lot harder for him to play with that same level of aggression. It seems like Decade reading that the possibility of the dives there. Look! The Noxus brother. Coming Gotta up come to help hell. your bros. Are going to start rotating up towards this side, I'd assume, with uh, the fact that Grubs will be coming up shortly. Another big thing for JDG last game was just Kanavi had control of the tempo of objectives and around the map. Speaking of him having control, they're going to find Decade here. And Sheer tanks it, but beautiful Ooh. seal. My goodness. The rookie comes up clutch in topside. Yeah, getting the most out of that W to be able to survive. So... JDG fighting an advan advantage top already. They actually should now be the team to potentially move over to those grubs. It looked like Doggo and Dre were making their way back down. We're going to get a replay here, right? Goes with the hook. Now, Missing's level 3 has the Unbreakable to deny a lot of this damage. And then once the passive is put on Doggo, it is so easy for a Ruler to put some threat on him, run him down. Uh, goes with the Flash to be able to finish that one off. And then it's here where Ruler just having flashed himself. Dre thinking, hey, I guess I'll use mine as well. I think Agar going to finish that one off, but... You know, confirming the kill sooner. We don't mind it. <laughs> I love how ruthless Ruler has been towards this uh, bottom lane matchup so far, but I think Doggo uh, going to be looking to cash in as soon as possible. We did get one Grub stolen away by Ultra Prime, so it might dissatisfy Kanavi from continuing that one as he'll go back to farm. Ooh, yeah. I thought after the, the kill top, right, because we jumped right into a replay, that it would have been Kanavi starting them off with sheer TPing back to lane. But it seems like Sheer didn't even do that. Uh, just went back and probably ran back to lane himself Mind to gaming. hold onto that TP. He also immediately got the steel caps. Love that because he can feel a lot more confident to trade here into Decade. Decade's going to be real close to level 6 though. And that's when things can start oh, turning on. But no, it's not turning on for Decade. Oh no, not like this Decade. Yeah. He's going to get taken out, and they're just giving all the love here to Kanavi. Three kills in six and a half minutes. And it makes it rough, right, when you're when you're down these summoners on the Darius, and it's like, as a Darius, you're going to find your advantages by going for heavy trades, by looking for the aggressive positioning, denying the Udyr the ability to push. But, ah, with Kanavi still being on that side of the map, being down the sums, it just sets him up for a world of failure, and Kanavi is being so active on the map this game yeah even, even if he didn't do anything here just showing constantly showing presence trying to put fear into ultra prime dragon finally goes down for ultra prime they're gonna look for a play in mid the root does come through but ultra prime a little bit behind the play and i want to zoom in to the lead that jdg have we saw them absolutely dominate last game but uh they are starting off very very brightly here in this game number two we've still seen some moves from ultra prime but JDG are the ones that are in a scaling position in terms of the smolder. So Ultra Prime need to kick it into gear. I mean, even things just looking at their comps holistically is I assume Ultra Prime should just get this and be able to back off. Sneaky Gal does have Ultra Charm. Here comes Mother, as now they actually get the combo. Ultra Prime, they can't move. They're stunned. And JDG take full advantage of that one. Two kills to Yagao. Hoping they can just get the blue buff and run away, but with the ult on Yagao with Charm still being there, can very easily set up the fight, and now it's going to make it annoying. You can, you can see Doggo being like, well, I don't get to push out this lane anymore. It has to back off, has to wait it out. It has to be ever-present of other members of JDG waiting in the wings like Missing. 
Something for Ultra Prime. They really, really need to get a cash in for Doggo if he's going to have any say into this matchup and the ruler. Now Decade going at it against Sheer here, but Sheer's got that power. He's got that deer, and he's going to run him down. Even with that ghost, can he do it? His ghost is coming up now, too, and he's got that boar. Is he going to get him? No, Ooh. he dodges out. Light, nice little sidestep. Here comes Hacker, but Sheer wants it. And a little bit of a mistake goes a long way. Hacker claims the kill. It's okay. First game in the LPL, getting hypey, wanting to run down the solo kill. Completely understandable, but does give a bit of breathing room over to Ultra Prime. Saw a cheeky little smile on his face down there, so you know he's having a little bit of fun there at least. Uh, his brothers on the team probably say, you know, calm down a little bit. It's okay. It's okay. We do get a free play of the bot lane. See some of the trading that happened in that blue buff. It's gonna be here right again as the ult he lands the charm. Sadly for Jway, since his hook didn't connect and he didn't keep walking, the charm actually landed onto Yuakai, yep. which uh, was probably the worst thing for Ultra Prime there. And now 3 0 and 2 on the Zinjao, 2 0 and 1 on the Ari. You have kills and assists on your smolder, like everything is yeah. where it wants. As we can see, for Doggo, 123 adoration stacks right now. Something for me, uh, I think that's super crucial for Ultra Prime with the comp they've drafted is Dway getting engages. They don't, like, you've got to have that hook land and that immediate big CC chain. And unfortunately for Dway, he just hasn't been able to land the big dredge lines yet. He's missed a lot of really crucial ones. So that can change at any moment. We'll see if it does. I think it's also just going to be too hard. Like, if missing's ever around, it should be impossible to yeah. like land a hook maybe maybe some kind of like flash ult onto smolder can can potentially work but even then again if missing's around it it just feels so hard to actually find that opening jdg position is such a great spot hell another thing we haven't talked about with the brahm right he's also a great pick against the darius and a mobile yeah. champion that someone has to just run at you like one q from brahm and ulti from, from brahm and decade is going to be stopped in his tracks so i feel like we've really seen just some like smart things come out from jdg today in terms of their planning and their preparation They've also just had a really good answer into some of the, the new additions of things. Exactly, that's my point, right? That the prep is there. I'd love to see that. Sheer, though, uh, yeah, that's going to happen to you. This is what happens when Adarius starts to get some oomph to him, and another death goes to Sheer. It seems like Ultra Prime have realized a tried and true strat that most top LPL teams do when playing against a newer <laughs> player, which is just gank the hell out of that, that young new player. We've seen it happen time and time again. Maybe Ultra Prime realized it a little bit too late into this game. But uh, they did realize it and now will lead them to be able to get three grubs of their own. So keeping it even. Yeah, we Kanavi like got in there. Love to see the, a little steal back, but Ultra Prime able to contest that one and get the, the at least split. Dragon, about 45. Ruler has priority in bot side. We'll get a plate here too. Do you think this is a position where Ultra Prime can at least finally get Doggo a payoff? Maybe, but I guess not right now with the fact that it's the base, but that's what they should be helping for, right? It's just, don't even look at the big picture of the map. Aw, oh, it gets canceled again. Don't even look at the big picture of the map as Ultra Prime. I think your goal is like, hey, we need to get a kill on this Draven. We need to try and find, like, get things rolling. Maybe even just full send it. Right now, they've defaulted back to the top because of how vulnerable Sheer is. Maybe you find him again. I did try to stress. Why not just go for him? He is the deer, though, and you got to be careful. He can absolutely run away, but that's what the Darius is perfect at. The bleed stacks, the slows. Hacker gets the kill. Only 220 gold now. So they are starting to win out on top. I do not think it makes up for the advantages they're finding in mid and the fact that their bot lane actually is up in CS and taking plates. Yeah. Uh, they're I mean, going to continue. Doggo backed on a cannon wave, so it got ruler so much presence in bot side, but also the turret plates. Also, Kanavi getting the dragon. They'll tie up that objective for themselves, and he's wrapping around bot lane here. Oh, Doggo. That was close. Over. If that wind becomes lightning hits, he definitely follows that one up, but does just go a little bit wide. You have Hacker coming to respond in a 3v3. We'll see if any fight actually breaks out from this. Hacker's no ult. Way says, yes, we fight, and Hacker goes in, gets the first one. A nice little strike on the missing, who also burned the heal before going down. Yuakai has arrived. Ultra Prime, they make it out with a kill. And missing. I think having time there to throw out the ult towards the end. I'm a bit surprised that he didn't, but nice 
from Ultra Prime. Good CC chain to start it off, coming out from Jue, having the damage with the three members there to be able to secure that one, but Ruler still looks unperturbed in that he is fine <laughs> pushing ahead in this 1v1 to take more plates. Yeah, we haven't checked in the stacks, but uh, I'm sure we're yeah, there 122, is. so getting close to the halfway point at least. And uh, another point I think that's slowly becoming more relevant here is the presence of Hacker with a 4-0 and o start on the Lee Sin. That combo of him with Yuka and the Karma is going to be oh so present for Ultra Prime as a win condition. I do not think that is enough. Karma Lee Sin, and you're playing it so. Oh, dog, no. Okay. It's all fine. they got, Lyric. <laughs> it's, uh, that's where I, they put the gold. <laughs> that's where everything's going. Well, I mean, not really, right? They haven't put any gold in the Karma. It's, 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 all, it's all in the Lee Sin. It's all. Ultra Prime fans, all of your hopes, all of your dreams, they're, they're on the backs of Hacker. Which, uh, again, Hacker's always been a fun player to follow. Like, oh, since yeah. Since started. Again, I remember his shooting days. I, I've cited the story of the years. My very first game I watched him, he just, like, blindly flashes over the enemy red buff, hoping for the 1v1. Without vision, without exactly knowing they're there, they yep. were. And, uh, you know, you can find the kill. So, Hacker's always been willing to look for that level of aggression. And right now, it does lead Ultra Prime just being able to take this Herald outright. But JDG don't seem bothered. JDG should know that they're up in gold even with the smolder brawn that they get to lean on and they should be feeling fine yeah absolutely i, I think they are coasting right along because as i like to call them the bridge builders for smolder are building away they've got the tools they've got plenty of materials yagao and kanavi are going to be that crucial linchpin to get ruler into the late game hacker can upset that by continuing to uh Go up to the fields that are sheer up here and farm him away. As this should be another catch out unless the deer has gotten strong enough. But that's the flash from Decade. And the guillotine with the bleed will get Hacker the kill in the end. Yeah, sheer. I mean, a bit of a rough second game for him. Not necessarily in terms of his own performance holistically at this point, right? Uh, you just got to take it. Ultra Prime making good trades towards the top side, realizing they cannot contest Minderbot. They cannot win either one of those fights. So let's go get gold where we can. It's still getting out traded on the opposite side, but like you said, at least Hacker now is going to be strong. Potentially find something if someone like missing overextends like he did before. Just seeing the picture in picture, the uh, flash being burnt in there, but I want to check in. Is this even state on the surface of things a, a real state of evenness? Because all that gold really being still in the favor of JDG and a lot of the power spread through JDG and more honed in on Ultra Prime. Yeah, I, 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 sadly, I don't. Like, again, it's good. Ultra Prime are bringing the gold a bit closer. And we're still at a point, right, where one misstep from JDG, Ultra Prime can win a fight. Like, yeah. they are not down and out. But it just feels like, even with them closing the gold, again, just compositionally, how JDG, so much frontline to be able to contend, shut down the Darius and the Draven. It'll still be a hard task. I think a lot going to be on finding a great kick from Hacker to set up for Decade and Doggo to find that impact. We have about another 45 second timer on the table. Another Dragon for Ultra Prime or JDG could be here. They're going to put a lot of bodies down here for Ultra Prime to set up at least priority for that one, it seems. They are going to seed mid lane, though. And I mean, hell, this is how Ultra Prime have been playing the last, like, five minutes, right? You find advantage in one place by dropping other areas of the map. They've been dropping mid and top for bot. Now, they're somewhat doing the reverse. They're dropping top and mid for to find a pick on bot. Pick doesn't happen, so it doesn't end up giving free damage over to JDG, but Ultra Prime are trying to respond in kind by bringing their whole team mid. <laughs> Smooth the pressure as a whole. Just everybody go in. And speaking of going in, Jway gets the hook. Finally, maybe that saving grace. Konami's going to pop that Crescent Guard, but it's not going to guard anything. He does buy time, but he'll go down, and it goes to Yuakai. And that's the thing, right? Comp, scaling, all of this stuff doesn't matter if JDG get picked off in the end. Konami maybe just not expecting the full brunt of the amount of forces who are going to be there. Ends up going down. jway has got his driver's license out. We'll get the crash in. Uh, missing might try to follow up on that one, but the follow through would have been there from Ultra Prime. They take their second yeah. dragon of the game. Yeah, it would have been rough because we saw in the picture picture on the mini map here now, Sheer stay top, take turret, try and get more gold under his belt, try and get him back into the game. 
And Ultra Prime still not on Soul Point themselves, so JDG not minding all too much with the Dragon going down. Sure, would have been great if, you know, Kanavi didn't get picked off and they could have contested it, but still maintaining the pressure. That's one thing that's really caught me about JDG this game is they haven't lost composure. JDG haven't yeah. lost composure, and Ultra Prime have still been looking for ways to come back into the game. So I think both teams' promising stuff is here. Kanavi is just not expecting the hook to come through and for Ultra Prime to follow up. Maybe to be fair, not I didn't expect it either. either. I mean, yeah. that was a heck of a lollipop. <laughs> and that was a huge squad out of nowhere. It went from JDG able to just push in mid for free against the Draven into all five members of Ultra Prime overloading mid. <laughs> Things change, but the more they stay the same, grouping in mid. Uh, as we do have the second item actually completed for multiple members on the side of JDG, their power just got increased a decent amount. I think they can utilize that as we're positioning around this pit here, but no objective to fight about. And uh, want to see actually if Ruler can continue stacking up here. Didn't find to do so so far. I also like how, for the most part, we've seen missing dip and duck into other lanes sometimes, but being very conscious of the fact that he really has to be in a nice proximity to Ruler at most times to make sure that nothing can go down yeah. and let him play the way that he's been playing. And now look, look at the amount of CS he's up about. Almost 50 CS up. Four it's ruler. insane. But, God, I, like, the timer's about to hit 20 minutes, Lyric, and we haven't had a single cash in for a Draven who is literally built off gold farming that way, right? You need to get that advantage ahead, and you're facing a, a, a first of all, ruler. Second of all, he's on Smolder, a, a pick that gets an Elder Dragon buff once you hit the scaling moment. So I think, like, just trying to find a way to integrate this into, into a win condition for Ultra Prime is so difficult. I mean, at this point, it feels it feels almost impossible, right? I mean, he's two items up. You're not even on your second item as Draven yet. Again, we've already hit on many times about the, the thematic countering of the Braum that's already brought in. He's going to have to ho hope. He's going to have to rely on Hacker. It really is going to have to come down yeah. to a kick if Doggo is going to find a kill. How much gold do you think he's going to get off the top of your head? Oh, 350 plus stack. <laughs> it's going to be a lot. We'll see if he can cash in here. They do get a little bit of lockdown, but Jway has to go away. They get the double, but Jway just gets taken out. And guess who has his stacks? Ruler. Gets brought down. JDG win another fight on the same page, chasing them down. They're going to be able to keep the damage going. Sheer even trying to get the top wave in now. At some point, JG might even be able to pivot and try and meet up with him there. Take some of their own vision control. Oh, Hacker. Hacker. Oh, they go in now, though. Mother! It's going to be a big amount of damage, but it's not going to be followed up on as Ultra Prime are playing pretty heavy off the turret. I mean, Deke there, Ghost and Flash, did manage to get the, the Flash from Ruler. So he's going to be a bit more vulnerable. And with the fact that JG themselves are going to constantly be pushing, it's going to put them in a, in a position where you could, you know, maybe get him on the overstep when he's hitting a turret. So possibilities are there, but it's still just looking so hard. I wonder, I if do you think JDG will go for a, a Baron? I think JDG seems like that kind of team. I don't know if they have the comp for it right now. <laughs> At least maybe a third item on Ruler uh, signifies that one. But so, I, hey, if you want to press the advantage, you I mean you have the team fight damage now. You've no. you've reached the mountaintop. I, I like that prediction. So third item on ruler, which is really right, he's really close to finishing off the rapid fire cannon. Then the possibility may be there. JNG don't strike me as the team to do it as much as some of our other top teams. Yeah. But it is always there. I just I mean, don't want to see Doggo get over four hundred stacks, and it's about to happen, right? Well that, there you go. It's it's already been ruined. It was ruined ah! the second you said it. I feel you, Doggo. I feel you. Shy feels bad, man. He'll get the cash in one day. I seriously wonder how much gold he's going to have. Hope we get like a super slow-mo zoom in of how much he gets. It's going to be a lot. I, I, I feel like you're actually making it worse for Ultra Prime. If I was the Ultra Prime social media guy right now, I'm like, Mazel, stop talking. If you keep doing that, he's all... Oh, yeah. but you keep talking about it. They make something happen. Look at that. The dragon has been cut down. They do find that. Sadly, though, it's still not on the Draven. But you'll take any kick you can get. Dragon's up in 12 seconds. This should lead Ultra Prime to getting themselves on Soul Point. That's huge. I mean, that's a, a state of the game that you can actually find a lot of strength off of, a lot of decision-making power off of. And it's a double Ocean Dragon in a row, so a little bit more sustainability there. JDG going to... Fickle oh, with the idea of, of, of going with the Baron. We're going to see if they can do it, or if Ultra Prime even read it at all. 
They Ruler should. Has no, TP. no one's showing on any lane. So good. Ultra Prime realizing something's up. The problem is, though, yeah, they didn't have the smolder there. So Baron not going to be taking a lot of damage. Now. Ruler does arrive now, but they're looking for a fight. Here comes Wei. He needs to be careful, though. Spider Man is way out of there, but he's getting caught down. Concussion blows there. Shield is there, too. And JDG, they're running him down one by one, baby. As JDG have called all the help they can get, they are decimating Ultra Prime one by one as dominoes fall. That is a full control from JDG, seemingly out of nowhere. They pick up three kills with only the loss of Yagao. They're actually going to be able to turn and guarantee the Baron for themselves now. We'll see if Hacker wants to try and go for a steal, but great team fight overall from JDG. Ultra Prime tried. They were able to pick out Ruler last time around, but they were just caught in a bit of a windstorm that JDG had caused. Now JDG launched the position away. Hacker has a bit of an angle, but the Baron's gonna just be turned off of, and they turn right on the deck, and here comes Hacker! He actually finds a nice little move out of the back line, and he's doing some damage. You said one thing could make it, but it's not gonna happen. How many times have we seen teams go at Ruler and come away with their team all gone around them? And it's happening again like a recurring nightmare. He's still alive. He's got a triple here too. But they are still pressing and Ruler's still alive. And you go. Oh, I mean, able to back him up now. I don't think Ultra Prime should be able to do too much. Sure, you throw out some poke. You, throw, you send a bit of a warning to let them know, yo, you cannot keep doing this Baron. But at the end of the day, that's all it's going to de-escalate to. So, he got I mean, it. I, true. He got it. He got it in, in the last fight, I believe. Yep. Not what we saw just now, but yeah, m moments ago. He's which literally on par now with items. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to get like two replays in a row. Because we had like a very extended action. Now into a bit of nothingness. This is the time. The void. The void, if you would. So here we go. We're going to go all the way back to this first potential engage when they run down to a concussive blows land. Very easy kill for them to finish off. But here you see Gao with the flash charm to guarantee the kill. Where does Doggo actually get this? Oh, it's the pullback on to get Gao. I didn't even actually see how much gold he got there. I didn't see there. either. There was, there was like so many little numbers popping up at the same time. Gold, health, this, that. Somebody at me, please, with how much gold he got. <laughs> I want to know. And then here, I mean, missing, trying to absorb a lot of this damage, buying more space for Ruler, has, you know, the ability to fly around the dodge, but it does lead to missing to go down in the end, but if you're able to find a bit of your own, you're able to get more stacks on Ruler, I think JDG at the end of the day, keep being happy with all these executes. Yeah, Yagao moving forward with the Ari, just so decisive, and it's been really fun to watch, especially with, you know, Ruler the little dragon chilling in the back just having a little bit of fun and uh, blasting fireballs at people. We do get the Baron started up already though. JDG forcing the hand yet again of Ultra Prime. Trying to run in. Ruler is going to seek his arm guard now for more survivability. Oh, they got Doggo! No! JDG will take that all day! And now it's 5v4. Ultra Prime at a deficit. Joy missing the hook. And here comes the heat. Both the Phoenix, the Dragon, and the Spirit Rush from Yagal are going to be used. We do have them turning back onto the Baron, though. And th this is a problem for JG, right? They, they keep finding more kills to keep getting more gold, but at the end of the day, they're not getting the prize that they're looking for. We'll see. Can Ultra Prime dissuade a Baron for a fourth time? Missing going to be there on the side. Sheer actually a bit of a bodyguard. No, they want the fight. Here we go. The Sheer pops the ghost going in, and now Ruler just has a front to back that he loves. This little dragon's going to be mauling you to pieces with his fireballs and even a little bit of his snot. As that's going to be two kills going now, Yagao's unleashed the rest of JDG in tow as Yagao chasing the hacker here. Not going to follow him up. Backs come through from JDG. The snipe not going to be there either, and JDG's starting to come away. So, Ultra Prime just saw... Oh, is Hacker, can you just, Does he can kill you just him? get away? Can you just get away already, Hacker? Yeah, there, there oh, we go. Oh, he has Flash. <laughs> I didn't follow up. But we saw Ultra oh, Prime. Doesn't. We saw... Oh, oh, oh what, is, what is going on? Why Ruler, Ruler flash for it. In? Ruler, flash for it. You have rapid fire. Oh, Sheer now wants it. Okay. It's just a circus. It's a complete turnaround here. And 
Unfortunately, one more Q will do it. They can't get the range on it either. It doesn't have the rapid fire auto up. I love that both Ruler and Sheer TP did just to finish that off in Hacker. <laughs> the great escape. What's a bigger win? Winning the series 2-0 or escaping in that situation, huh? huh? That, that's, what all the, that's what all the Hacker fans are wondering. What's a bigger win? I, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't feel, you know, maybe it's a, it's a dub. It's a mental dub. It's uh, one of those. It's, it's uh, not a dub. It was a terrible question. It, it was a, a terrible, it is terrible. A much, I, I it couldn't is a hold much, it. I just it is a much it. bigger win to win the series. A it much is. bigger win. Yeah. Especially uh, for also, Ultra Prime. That'd be huge. It would be huge. In a day where, you know, we've seen Rare Adam uh, do some interesting things. JDG, it would have been a huge upset. But they are looking at chugging along to an eight and one score line. And again, this is a team that hadn't played, uh, you know, up to par until recently in terms of the amount of series played. And they're starting to catch up big. Yeah, finally starting to get some under their belt uh, and, and catch up to where the other teams are at, right? Sitting at seven and one second, only eight games played. A lot of teams already beyond the hell. Ultra Prime right at, at 10 themselves. So keep an eye as more items getting built. Shadow Flame by Yagao now picked up, who is huge with the 10 stacks on oh, the Medjis. Yeah. And again, I think it's interesting. Ruler still sitting on that arm guard. Didn't have to use it earlier. I think buying it to give him even more safety from the, the threat of Hacker jumping in and looking for that kick. Oh, Joy's just dead. That's concussive blows. They just catch him out completely. And that's your front engage? That's your front line. I'm telling gone. you. There's a strong argument, all those splits of LPL, there, there could and should have potentially been more Brom. You know, Brom could have, could have really? shut down a lot of what a lot of LPL teams were, were trying to do. I don't now think there's a contest. Back to the Baron. They're close. They very difficult. Yeah, they're just going to seed it. It's all she wrote for the Baron. Go over to JDG. The problem is Ultra Prime are backing off and, and giving time. The problem is I actually don't think Soul would be a win for, for Ultra Prime, right? Ocean Soul, it's going to help them out in some of these fights, but at the same time, JDG looking for a lot of all-ins, have a ton of damage with the advantage that they've accrued, 7k, and now with the Baron, they're just going to be able to mow down your base. They're already doing that damage right now in the mid lane turret. The Siege is initiated. Hacker on a monster flank. I don't think he can actually do anything. They will spot him out, though. He can kick, I guess, Yigao, but Yigao has Flash, has a Spear Rush, has ways to get out. Kicking any of the other members of JDG feels like it'd be pointless. Ruler we already highlighted with Seeker's Arm Guard would be able to survive as well. And hell, now TPing in with yeah. the Vori. That's so big. They still have two minutes on the Baron buff. And they have so many minions down here. Double stacked wave with the cannons. And the siege is continuing. No turret gonna be left in the wake of JDG if they can have their way with it, at least here on this bot side. All those minions now gonna be taken care of a little bit, missing gonna block the back end of the Whirling Death. And on to the end hip goes JDG. I mean, for Ultra Prime, it's, it's hard having to contend with this JDG squad with the Baron, with the amount of threat that they have. It won't get easier after this series either. They play oh, T yeah. They play TS next and then BLG like Ultra Prime have a hard three game three games worth of series to go through. The hardest that you can uh you, you have to pass. I will give them something though, as we see JDG kind of circling the prey here in this uh series. Ultra Prime kept this second game a lot closer than I, exactly. I think we would have expected after that first game. And I think that's at least something for them in, in a very struggling season. That's also why I said they remind me a lot of AL, where they have a lot of close games, despite being this far down in the standings. Where yeah. they, it, it can make you think, huh, can they do more? And then sadly, it's just right out of their grasp every time. Well, JDG trying to grasp onto a dub. They have one last wave to go in. Hacker tries to go for the play. Oh, no. And it doesn't look great. As the kill goes out, that is already two down as Mom helps claim another one. That's a double. Could they get a triple for him? That's going to be another one going down. The Quadra is there. But there we go. JDG come away with it. The little dragon has grown to a big, strong boy. And JDG claim a 2-0 victory over Ultra Prime. What do you think Sheer feels worse about? Getting camped and kind of 
kind of running it a little bit in terms of how often the, the die was able to work. Not much he could do. Or is he more upset that he just prevented Ruler from getting a Penta? <laughs> I, I think Ruler's going to have a serious conversation with him after this. They're going to take about an hour. They're going to sit in a room together, and he's going to talk it out. <laughs> again, uh, no. Not much he could do about getting Dove over and over again. Could have done more yeah. about that. I don't know. But <laughs> see, on, a, on a serious <laughs> note, Expected performance from JDG. It was nice of them to bring in Sheer and, you know, give him a bit of experience against Ultra Prime. We don't know if yeah. going forward this is